manifest universe and the manifest universe is the body of God. It's how God expresses itself. And I don't know, how many of you have seen the movie Lucy? So um, it's about um, a drug that this girl takes by accident and it increases her brain capacity because we all use about 10% of our brain. And as her brain increases, then she becomes more aware of um, the godliness of the universe. However, the more aware she becomes, the less human she becomes. And at one point in the movie, um, she, this detective says to her, you don't need me. And she said, yes, I do. And he said, why? And she said, to remind me. And it reminded me that the body of God is where God gets to express and feel and know what it's like. Because remember, at the level of that intelligence, it's an unchangeable um, beingness of love, which is great. However, it didn't experience or know anything other than this massive intelligence, this massive love. And so in its wisdom, it created us. So it ex could experience a life through us. And so Ernest Holmes says, the body of the universe cannot help changing. This is what constitutes the eternal activity of spirit within itself. The spirit passing into form. Creation eternally going on. And so it is why each one of us is here, God in form, so we can experience and it can experience through us. And so then how do we do that? We do that with grace. Grace is the currency of life that matters. Grace is the givingness of life, and that certainly is given automatically. But we are only saved by using it. The self must raise the self by the self, because the self is God. It reminds me of the reading that we're doing um, on Wednesdays. The book we're using now is Living the Science of Mind. And as much as I've used that book in classes, um, I highly recommend if you don't own it, you get a copy. Because in it, Ernest Holmes takes, remember he wrote What I Believe in 1927, and then it became our Declaration of Principles, and now we call it What We Believe. And with that, in um, Living the Science of Mind, he takes every sentence and then describes it based on other teachings. Because remember, he read all the ancient wisdom, and then he synthesized that into what we teach here today. And so, the self by the self, I remember the reading on Wednesday, they must have used the word self in one sentence, uh, probably like 10 times to the point I finally giggled. I thought, it, it's a little much. <coughs> and yet it was really heartfelt, heartfelt to remember that we have this self, and then we have that higher self. And so when we're talking about grace, how do we live in grace as God? How do we express that? So spiritually, um, you know, I've talked about reading this book called The One Thing. And we have copies of that for sale in the bookstore if you don't have it. I highly recommend it. Because although it was um, sold as a business book, and it's the number one um, seller um, on the New York bestsellers list, Times bestseller list. He starts out by saying the one thing everybody should do every single day, first thing, meditate and pray. Your spiritual practice, meditate and pray. And when he took the finished product to his publisher, the publisher said, you cannot publish a business book and tell people they need to meditate and pray. And he said, I not only can, I will, and if you don't want to do that for me, I will find myself another publisher. Mm -hmm. And so fortunately, the publisher was smart enough to go, okay, um, because another publisher probably would have been very happy to pick that up. But it, it, it's about connecting to the divine. The first thing we should do every single day, and it should be a habit. It should be like brushing our teeth. And I know with a lot of people, they'll say, I have a spiritual practice. 
yeah, you know, every other day, once a week, um, you know, and it really is, and, and I say that because I was like that. I, I would say, I have a spiritual practice, and I do because I have a spiritual practice that I practice every single day. However, it wasn't a dedicated moment, dedicated moment in time. And to me, that is a real spiritual practice. You say every day when I wake up, the first thing I'm gonna do is meditate. And then I'm gonna pray. And then I'm gonna get on with my day. Sometimes I will reverse it and do um, my exercise first, you know, walk my dog and then come home and meditate. However, I don't do anything in the morning now until I've meditated. It is one of the first things I do in the morning. And so, you know, following um, the one thing because it so talks about um, grace and how we live our life, is then how are we graceful physically? If this is the body that contains God, how are we treating it? Are we getting enough sleep? Are we eating as good as we choose? You know, I'm not going to sit up here and dictate how people should eat, especially for somebody who, you know, loves a pint of ice cream on a Saturday night. Probably why my back is up. Um, I know, I know, ice cream doesn't do that. But it's, um, you know, we all have those moments, and yet, are you healthy 80% of the time? Do you make choices that will help you live a healthy life in this container that God has given you? And it doesn't matter what it looks like. It's a matter of, is it healthy regardless of the size? You know, can you move with grace and ease? Isn't it funny that I would be talking about that today? No, I can't. <laughs> and yet, most of the time I can. And I'm a pretty healthy human being. You know, and I have started to walk every day. It's part of a new habit I am creating, of committing to myself and to me only that I will walk 10,000 steps a day before I go to bed. And I've done that for probably... 10 or 15 days straight now. And in this book, they talk about the habit taking, not 21 days, on average, 66 days for a habit to become a, a habit that you go to. So that now, after 66 days, if you kind of fall off the wagon, what happens is, since it's a new habit, you'll go back on. You know, I have done things for 21 days and then stopped, and I haven't thought about them for three years. Oh, yeah, I remember. I was going to do that. So gracefully, how do you take care of this container for the divine? And that can look different for each and every one of us. And yet, remember, this is where God lives. This is what we've been given. And so to take care of that to the best of our ability, so that we move with grace and ease, and that we... We feel healthy most of the time. And then um, the next aspect of being graceful is taking care of your personal life. You know, and part of that is <clears throat> finding something that makes you laugh or makes you um, go, wow, I hadn't thought of that. Reading something. You know, picking up a book and maybe not thinking about reading the whole book all at once. Five pages a day. Think of how much you would um, expand your mind if you read something five pages a day. And when you're done with that book, pick up something else. It can be fiction, because you know what fiction does? It ignites the imagination. There is nothing better, even if you've seen a movie, than reading the book because you create all of the characters in your mind. You know, I had read um, the vampire novels before I saw the movie. So I was Team Edward before we even got there. <laughs> I was a little bit disappointed by the actor they chose. That was m not my vision of what he should look like. And so it was my imagination that got to create every single one of those characters. That's why we read whether it's to expand our mind professionally 
or whether to expand our imagination. And if you think, ah, oh, I don't want to read, get one of those brand new coloring books. How many of you have those now? They sell them at Michael's. And oh my God, they are so busy. They are so busy. Little, tiny, little, tiny squares to co color in. And yet it opens up that part of your brain that says, I'm going to fill myself with grace. Because when I fill myself with grace, then I relate to other humans on a more graceful level. And so it is to remember then the next spiritual aspect of that is emotional. Who am I hanging out with most of the time? We are all going to have people in our lives that maybe are going through a time when, um, you know, they're on the downside of happy instead of on the high side of splendid. And what I recommend is, instead of going on the downside of unhappy with them and kind of getting in that spiral, stay on the high side of splendid and help vibrationally bring them up. Because that's why we're here. That's why we build community, so we can support each other. So when I walk in on a Sunday morning, and even though I'm <coughs> trying to appear like I'm on the high side of Splendid, everybody's like, yeah, you don't look right. <laughs> and do you know how many healers we have in this room? <laughs> Good gracious. Just come in and walk a little wobbly sometime. <laughs> they're, all, they're all ready to just align you know, your back and, and everything that's going on with you. And so, you know, that, it's really good to come in here when we're not feeling very joyful. I remember um, somebody told me that Michael Beckwith had a, a conversation with one of the people that goes to Agape in L.A. And they have a big uh, community and they have really uplifting rock music. And somebody said to him, um, I haven't been here in about a month because I wasn't feeling, I wasn't feeling the joy. And I didn't, you know, I, I didn't feel like I belonged. And if you've ever seen Michael Beckwith, he said, oh, honey, that's when you should come. Just sit and let everybody else lift you up. That's what community is all about. We're not all going to be on the high side of Splendid all the time. And yet we can all lift each other up, so at least we're closer to it when we're struggling. And struggle can look like all kinds of different things. And so how much grace do we bring into each other's lives? And so then what he talks about is, you know, different aspects. The last thing that we should worry about and this surprised me because I think it's the first thing we all go to. The last thing in the circle to worry about is your financial, your financial well-being. Are you graceful in your finances? And the reason being is because if you're graceful in every other aspect of your life, if you're taking care of your spiritual grace, if you're taking care of your physical body, if you're taking care of your mind and your reading or your coloring or you're relating to people, if you're reaching out to friends and family personally, if you are being that space of grace, your finances can't help but grow. Because your finances are just an outpicturing in manifest form of God. That's what energy is. It's all God. It's all expressing in and through and as each and every one of us. And so the financial picture is the last thing. And yet, where do we go first? And we suck up, we get all of our energy sucked out of us because of something that's happened to us financially instead of going back and thinking, have I done my spiritual practice? Have I taken care of my physical body so I can be the best I can be in every aspect of my life? Am I really expanding my knowledge? 
of how I relate to people, who I am with people, how I want to be in business. And am I touching the people that are important to my life personally? And then am I touching those in business? Because when I'm doing that, I promise you, we don't have to worry about our financial picture because it will be a reflection of who we are physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And then the financial just goes, okay, I'll be there too. So let's just take a moment to pray. Ah, so breathing in and feeling the healing energy of this room. The delight and the love and the expression of God as each and every person here. Knowing as we come together on this Sunday morning, it's like we're recharging. We're remembering why we answered this call to be human. So we can touch each other's lives. And so in knowing and answering that call, we open up that space within us that says yes. Yes to the divine to work through us at the expansion of our consciousness. At the spiritual openness of our being. To know the truth of who we are and why we're here. To live from that place of passion. To be an expression of grace of God in every moment of every day. Regardless of what's going on. To know that that light and that presence is here right now. For what I know to be true is God is more powerful than any condition. And so knowing that as I sit here, I can feel that energy moving through me and moving through every person here. And as it expands out, we feel that vibration of love, of grace, and of knowing. We are here for the betterment of humanity, for the betterment of ourselves, to be that expression of God fully and completely, to know grace in every moment of every day, and to express that fully and completely, and for that, I say thank you, God, in this moment, in this time, in this space. Grace is all there is. For the winds of God's grace are always blowing, and it is for us to raise our sails and fly. And so it is. And so it is.